January next year your your credibility is gone you better know how much money you need and for what that's uh, just uh, another way of putting that is really that of course you need to be here to make sure that your vision is becoming a reality and staying true to that but that said sorry <laughs> today more than ever you would gotta keep a, a close call on keeping the, uh, the, the lights on because if you cannot be trustworthy in that there's no way you are going to get anyone to fund your company. They want to fund that big, hairy, audacious goal, but today, and for the last 12 months, we've seen that so much can have a really, really high impact on the potential, on the growth of your company and the possibility to, to create profit. So always, always keep an eye on this and make a plan that mil will take you there, but always have a plan to take you there as well. Don't give up. And don't give up. <laughs> exactly. So um, we're going to have a, a little exercise here uh, because one of the things we're seeing is... Um, oh, sorry. We had one more here before we go to the exercise. <laughs> I forgot about this one. Uh, when, when, we go to, uh, when, we go, when you go to an investor, um, this is not us. Someone else invented this, but it's a really cool way of approaching your business model and go to market. And this is a lean canvas. Have, how many of you have seen lean canvas before? Hands up. Good, so about half. So what is a lean canvas? It actually looks at a lot of different things underlying here, but there are three main things they're trying to address. The first one being desirability. Why should I buy your product? What makes it attractive to me as a customer? And in that we look at you know who the customer is, what is the key message you're trying to send, the value proposition if you want, and why would you win the over the cu customers from your competitors? Those are th what makes you desirable. Uh, then we have feasibility. So if this is what makes you attractive, this is your ability to deliver. If you promise people you're going to take them to March next year, it might be desirable for a lot of people, but the probability of you being able to do that in one year is probably non-existent. So this is about understanding what makes you credible and how do you deliver on the promise you gave the customer. The third thing we're looking at here is your viability, which basically means how much will you make, how much is it going to cost you? Oversimplified, there are more things to it. So if you have answers to those three boxes when you meet an investor, you increase, especially in a crappy market on this third one, you increase your likelihood of getting money. I know that my customers love my product. Not only do I know they love it, but I can also deliver on that promise without any problems. And over time, I can guarantee you I will make money off this. Seems very simple, but a lot of people forget these three things when they meet their investors and they focus on the great product and why they need money and so on. So, sorry, go ahead. Adding one thing to the, on the viability and, and uh, financial stuff, I, it's really tricky to, I mean, we all heard about the hockey stick and you tend to have this fantastic Excel spreadsheet with amazing hockey sticks uh, with low credibility. And then you say, okay, we're going to ramp it down to be credible. And then you actually lower all the figures and then you have no ambitions anymore. <laughs> so to find the balance, what is, you know, bold enough to be important and have impact and maybe offering a 10x over time in investment versus actually be credible in, in, in some sense of actually being able to do this um, and not being uh, bold at all. It's Tough and tricky balance. It's a very good point. I'm working right now with a company and they, they lower their prices and I said, can you survive on this? And they said, no, but we need to get the volume. But once you lower the price, it's hard to put it up again. Customers get upset. So now we go to the exercise. And this is a very good exercise when you want to raise money. 
and it's not always the same eight topics we have around this this wheel of pain or growth wheel depending on which situation you're in um, and what we do is we ask people to kind of say okay where are you today on the scale from 0 to 10 and where would you need to be to feel comfortable if this is the same questions you're going to get in the due diligence and if you don't have answers to these questions yourself you will have a problem raising money so when you look at this and you do these dif differences and if you're all on ten on both where y where you're uh, where you are and where you want to be then you shouldn't be here then you should go out and enjoy yourself so most of you probably have a little bit of a gap here and what you do is you pick one of those areas you can do it for all ten but in order to answer when an investor asks you so you say our challenges are because we don't and we need help with this is also good for your ask for money why do you ask for money if you have no problems why do you ask for money well we need to do this we want to achieve this goal so to give you an example um, we're our challenge is that building a scale and repeatable sales funnel is not working the way we want to it's not repeatable it's every sale is tough a lot of scale apps and startups have that challenge every sale is a challenge every sale is a battle you win it one by one so how do you make it more scalable so the second one um, is for example if we would be one of our challenges and we're running you how do we attract you to our growth labs what do we need to do to make you come here for example so if that's our challenges so what is why why don't why do we have these challenges well maybe it's because we don't have a standard way of pitching and maybe we don't have the right people in focus to deliver on the promises we're doing typical challenges for a scale up so what do we need help with we need help with packaging the offering running market tests structuring the insight developing and managing a model so this way this you could also explain why do I need money well we're gonna validate we've done a lot of come come long way in this ring and now we're gonna to make this test for doing this test we need money then it becomes very tangible how are you gonna use the money you're investing or the investor is doing so uh, we're gonna do a five minute exercise yeah and, and if you're alone talk to your buddy talk to yourself <laughs> and if you're here with a colleague uh, buckle up and uh, do it together Need a pen? And you'll have about five minutes to do this a little bit. That's what Cedars and Republic is doing today when it comes to building our product for connecting private investors with startups and building investor communities. It's what we're doing now in Europe and what we're also doing in the US. So I wanted to tell you a little bit about sort of what we have to that could help you in this. And then we'll also end on some of the learnings that we've taken from the many conversations that we have here in the Nordics today, uh, spe specifically to this topic. So what we have in our, uh, in, in, in our operations today is 10 years of history of funding companies and funding them with private money. Uh, we have funded wi companies with over 2.4 billion euros. And we have now close to 2,000 companies in the portfolio that we've did fundraising for today. That means that we, uh, and we've actually had more than a 90% success rate over those 10 years to fund these companies. 75% of these companies are still alive, and about 75% of those companies are val as valuable or more valuable than they were when they, they got funded by the, the private investor community of Cedars and Republic. So this is a fantastic track record to have, and this is the type of resource that we're now bringing to is that are successful wave piston is a sustainability and impact company from the Nor from the Denmark that's super super successful today on the platform Sono Motors electric car company that actually went IPO after and then we have companies like Impossible Foods for example or Tilly which is a Swedish company that's going now for their second fundraise and and hopefully they will be able to raise with us as well 
but we also raise for, for uh, uh, VCs and institutions like Seedcamp, which is one of the Europe's largest investors and an early stage investor. So we not only raise for companies, but we actually raise for funds and institutions as well. So this is a huge ecosystem that we're now turning into a resource for you and a resource for the community at large. So why should you then raise rather than raise from an individual investor? Well, there are many reasons for that. You know, the short term, of course, there's access, access to capital, and this might mean that you access more capital than you can today in a fairly crappy market that we exist in. But really, this does mean that you can get investors that invest more. These investors that you do attract, they, th the long-term value that they give you are, is up to what we've seen more than six times what a regular customer is. So this creates a very, very sticky relationship to you from a very commercial standpoint. It also means that these guys, they want to put the your identity together with, with theirs. And they will represent you, they will be your ambassadors, they will be out there in your markets making sure that more people know about you. Four times does these people recommend these companies more than a, a regular ambassador or a regular partner. So having skin in the game and make is, you know, I'm very values based. I want to make sure that we solve the really important problems here. But at the end of the day, we're very simple human beings. And that relationship that goes through your wallet is a really, really strong one. So you develop that with a lot of people. That's the type of, of resource that we will put in the hands of you. And of course, you, will you can use these for any type of engagement that you need. Just make sure that you build a community that also wants to engage with you on this. This could be referring, it could be hiring, product testing, anything that will develop your company into a more successful one because that's what they have invested in and that's what they want to support you with. And to that point, there are many ways that you can turn that investor community into value. This is also something that we, through the raising for all these companies, we know how to do. So this is something that we really do want to advise you on as well. When you meet us, we don't only advise you on how to raise money, but we also advise you on how to turn that into long-term value for your company. There are many different aspects of this. You can have a support community, you have a product community, or a customer acquisition community. This all depends on the timing of your business and the community that you build. What are they interested in doing and what does your company need? This could actually evolve as well, but it's super, super important that you also keep a North Star metric and focus on, on this, because this is the type of long-term value that you will develop from this. But that said, today, raising money, um, I mean, we've, we spoke about the value of death. That value of death has probably never been more deep and more deadly than today. So it is extremely important to do get a certain level of focus here on what are the closest problems at hand that you need to find solutions to. And many companies that we speak to today do have that knife on their throat, runway is running out, and I don't know how relevant that is to you, but here are a few ways that we found that we can also advise companies that are at that verge. Well, some of this is that we talk to a lot of companies who've already raised money to make sure that they can raise from existing investors. You don't want to do down runs, you don't want to do lower evaluation of your companies, but that said, in this time and, and, and this state of the world, you might have to. But if you do, turn to your existing investors and make sure that they get the sort of sweetest deal there is and make them even more connected to you. Because that way you will at least make sure that you build that bridge to the next valuation and to that possible market that you have and the ones that you already have will help you get there. Something that we, I, I spoke to a company about last week was certification of the current talent. I mean, many of them, we look closely on them and we ask them to, to look at, oh, can you fire staff? Can you make sure that you limit your operations today? Maybe that's not what you want to do. And then one solution could be to turn those brilliant talents of yours into an actual service for others. Make sure that you bridge this gap by getting another type of income towards your, your current operations and be able to finance that. Of course, unfortunately, some of you guys might have to swallow your pride and go out and get a part-time job as well. 
It's not what you want to hear from someone who's inv advising you to get, in, uh, to get investments today. But that said, that's the state of the market. That is what you might have to do to be able to survive and keep that spirit alive, keep that light on, and don't, don't, don't giving up on that dream. Um, there's debt financing. We don't do debt financing too much, but there is debt financing out there, and they've turned that into a better asset today than it, it used to be. Some of this could go towards financing customer the, the customer value that you're building up, contracts that might live up to a value moving forward. I think today, more than ever, that is a way of financing companies to taking you to that next round. Uh, and at the end of the day, some of the companies, a lot of the companies that we meet do have a lot of competition in the markets as well. Like many of us are on that s similar problem that we're trying to solve. And I would say make friends of that competition and see if you can actually merge and, and combine what you have in terms of resources and understanding of how to solve that problem. Because that today might mean that you are becoming a better comp competitor in the market. And for you guys to, under to know that come this fall, we will start speaking Swedish. Uh, and that means that we will be an even more valuable resource for you. Uh, it's not only going to be Swedish, it's going to be Spanish, French, German, somewhere down the line, Finnish as well, hopefully. Um, but this means that we will become a fantastic resource for you also to scale into Europe and finding new audiences and new investors. So please let me know if you want to be part of that journey. We will have a lot of resources to, to support you with. Uh, now come Friday, Funding Fridays here. So Friday morning, I'm always here meeting some entrepreneurs and, and giving uh, some advice on how to do funding. So please check in with the service desk here if you want to book a time for that. You can always find me um, on my link here or on my email addresses. So all through summer, I will have time slots for anyone to who wants to book a funding advisory service. And um, of course, no strings attached with that. All right. What are you guys cool. up to then? <laughs> what are we up to? <laughs> well, for um, scale-ups beyond 2 million euros in, in turnover, we actually have uh, another batch of Nordic scalers run by us and some friends starting this fall. These are a few really important dates. Applications closes in mid-August 21st. Program starts in the end of September 25th and ends by the uh, beginning of December. So if you and or affiliated friends of yours that's running companies with 2 million euros in turnover or more uh, should definitely go to a link coming on a slide very soon. <laughs> I thought it was the next one, but a few more in, in between. Uh, and read more and, uh, and apply. Um, so what is Nordic Scalers? Well, it's a structured, accelerated program, specifically customized for scale-ups. Basically, teams with not only a product market fit, teams with traction, teams with um, recurrent revenue beyond 2 million euros per year, um, somewhere, you know, 10 plus people in the team and 20% year on year growth, but that's not enough with some frustration of, of not growing fast enough, should definitely join Nordic scalers. Um, we're actually setting up this, uh, program and I think, uh, Edgar mentioned it. it's divided into some things that are for everyone. So the one too many sessions where scale, uh, you know, funding will be definitely a part of that. Uh, most scale-ups need funding to scale faster. So funding will probably be a part of the, the one too many sessions. But even more so is, is on the one-to-one -one coaching side and actually really deep diving uh, uh, with us and, and some of our also coaching and mentoring friends uh, into the specific needs and challenges and pain points and opportunities for your scale-ups and we're really working close with you and we're also doing uh, on the one to many uh, uh, parts we're also doing some peer-to-peer -peer, and that factor is actually 
underestimated by many people. Uh, entering a room with people, even though you're different companies, you have different types of challenges, actually sharing some pain points is, um, is very effective. These are some of the challenges that we're working with in the program. Um, you know, really getting ready to scale and supporting to, to have all the pieces of the puzzle uh, in place and, and the, the best conditions, building teams and stuff like that. We do a lot of pitch training um, uh, and, and OKRs and setting up goals. OKRs is interesting. It stands for o Objectives and Key Results. I'm sure you, you've heard about it. Uh, someone's calling, but let it ring. Um, uh, setting goals is pretty easy. Setting the right type of goals is not as easy. By the right type of goals, we mean the goals that actually is big and bold enough to really move the needle of your companies, but still not too crazy so that you can actually have uh, you know, a chance to reach those objectives. Um, we'll uh, support you on developing a scale-up plan. Um, we'll uh, do even more fundraising and also, of course, together with, with Jonas and, and his team at Cedars, is it's not only on the one-to-many side, also customized specifically for your needs. Uh, and everything around going international, uh, which markets to start with, doing uh, analysis on that uh, and building the right type of organization to be able to actually enter new markets. One thing is to uh, start some online sales globally through a web. It's something completely different to really enter a market with everything that means. And also for your company, what it means to run multiple teams in multiple markets, maybe in multiple time zones and multiple languages. Uh, what happens when you actually are, you know, you, you're pretty used to be a founder. And now you have to become a CEO. Maybe you have to put your, your own feelings aside to really become the CEO of a fast growing company. That's something else. Maybe you're not the guy that should be CEO over time. Maybe you had a numbers slide over here. Maybe you're reaching out to 100 people. Maybe you should actually bring in a professional CEO. So, um, and, and very top line, uh, we won't be able to go through all the examples here, but we've mentioned uh, and already touched upon the growth of meter. We have some other um, proven methodologies that we work with in the program. OKRs is, of course, one of them. Uh, and we're going to define uh, the tools to be used for each and every scale-up individually. We're super proud that we've had a, a bunch of companies that already taken part of our Nordic Scalers program over the years. Uh, and uh, I think that the average growth year on year for the teams that entered the program were somewhere around 25, 30 percent. And the average growth number year on year for those teams when they were on the other side of the program was actually 60 percent. So we know that the program is actually uh, really helpful for, for not for all, but for, for some types of, of um, scale ups. And, and um, uh, as always, the more you give, the more you get. So it also depends a little bit on how much you actually commit yourself to a program like this. But we we really uh, encourage everyone to to be active. Um, now it comes. So to read more and apply, just uh, use the QR code here to get to, uh, to a web page with some more information and an application form. Please feel free to share that to uh, your own networks. You, you, you may have fellow entrepreneurs that also should consider this. We'll do another round of um, an intro session like this probably in August when we're getting closer to the application deadline. But also really important to say, if you're a Swedish company, this program fee is actually covered all the way up to half of the fee by Vinova. So we have governmental grant support from Vinova supporting the startups that, uh, sorry, the scale-ups that actually enters the program. Uh, to only pay half of the tuition uh, to be a part of the program. And the same goes for our um, friends and brothers and sisters in Norway and, and Denmark, Iceland and, and Finland. Not 
necessarily 50%, but there's uh, uh, a little bit of a variety. In Finland, there is there is also this is Finland. Finland is covering 50%. In uh, in Norway, it's like they're covering 50k. So it's a uh, a version of that. But um, if you're uh, Swedish scale up, you have the best conditions. The Nordic sales will never be cheaper than now. <laughs> so uh, yeah, with that said. I want to say a final word, Edgar. Yeah, I think we've, we've come to an end. Uh, I wanted to thank you for coming. Um, as you notice, this is a, a, a joint effort between Cedars and Epicenter to have you here. I hope you enjoyed it. We enjoyed having you here. And I hope some of you will join in both to Cedars getting more money and successfully so, hopefully, and also joining our program to use that money in a smart way. So thank you for coming and mm -hmm. have a good day. Thank you very much.